Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Pokemon Jewel. This is going to be the biggest banner yet. I've checked through these figures and there are some amazing changes. And also some terrible changes and things that have gone wrong in Pokemon Jewel in the past week. So we're going to be getting into the new figures. The biggest bug ever. Loyalty bonuses and what they mean for the game and how you acquire them. And new ranking rewards and are we happy with them or not. So... Let's get into it. So first off, when logging into your account, you will have noticed you will have got a ranking reward. And I just, thank you Suraj Mishra uh, for, for one big win. He is like, he's a 3,500 rank player and I beat his Deoxys deck. Took him down with my good counter to De Deoxys deck. And won three, 30 tickets. It meant I was like rank 800 and I could just leave it for, you know, I, I lost six games in a row when I was going for the top thousand and then the next day I had to pull six wins in a row and then finally to have that shot against Suraj Mishra for a top 1000 rank. Thank you, <laughs> Booster Tickets 30, just confirmed. So they will be in your inbox now. And, well, you, you don't have to actually claim them. But in your inbox, what we do have is a lot of rewards. We will have received our login bonus, Reward for the campaign room matches in form of Karma Knight. The booster tickets that you'll have received if you um, got to five. I did just again in the last day, I keep doing that. Monthly loyalty reward bonus, which we'll be getting into that. And apology for the chain bug. So, let's start with the chain bug. If you are not familiar with what this is, there was a glitch in which if you set a rare figure, and a rare cube, rare green cube, and then took the um, rare figure out, put in an EX figure, you could apply, if it was level four or below, not level five, you could apply that EX cube to it and therefore get a chain level for it. So if you're like me, I had, I have like 15 rare cubes, they, I, I would be able to make some of my figures amazing. Now, I didn't do this because I didn't know and thankfully the person who did find this sent a message to the developers and they kind of got on top of it pretty quick. But it's a massive, massive, massive mistake on their part to allow such a bad bug. I mean, I understand the complexity of, of building a game and not having any glitches, but wow. That's huge, and if we're going to see people with mad chains now, that will be the reason why. My second like, thing I, I think of thought on this is, yes, we got two booster tickets. A, that's not really equal to what other people have probably got. But the funniest thing is, this will have gone out to everybody. So if you did apply those chains, you get two booster tickets as well. Woo! <laughs> so if I don't even know if they're going to be able to reverse that. And I hope they can find some way of easily doing that, but I don't think they will. It must be too complex given that a lot of people may have taken advantage of it. So, as we talked about ranking rewards, let's get into the new ranking rewards. When you now look at your ranking system, it used to be 50 booster tickets for top 100, and it's now reduced to a, a, a fairly measly 30 booster tickets compared to, you know, a 50, 20 for the top 1,000, going from 30 to 20, and lower and lower and lower. Basically, they've replaced Karma Knight with uh, what well, was the equivalent of an extra 20 booster tickets. So 200 Karma Knight is, they've said that's equivalent to getting 20 booster tickets for the top 100. Now, here's where I feel that, yes, we're not gonna be getting as many booster tickets from this, but you could argue, given that they've put new ways of getting booster tickets from um, our hall matches, there is a new, we're not gonna be too short on booster tickets in just being able to play for them. So I think that's what the, where the balance that, and Karma Knight is a fairly good reward. If I was gonna say which was the best of both, I wish it stayed the same, but you know, they're changing the game and we have got some booster tickets, so don't be too disappointed in that. We're still gonna be able to acquire them in different ways, and there may be more ways to acquire them in the future, who knows. So, next up. Oh. 
So next up, let's get into the information. A new plate, which I'm so excited about. X speed, only one cost, choosing one of your Pokemon on the field, turning that white their white attacks to a gold attack. This is a really nice, neat plate and very unique. We haven't seen anything like this in the past. Being such a low cost, this is gonna be well worth putting in your deck. You know, when you've got that matchup of Moltres versus a big purple figure, all of a sudden you put that into effect and your gold Mulch is going to have huge span. Other figures have massive white attacks that you can put that into, and wow, it's going to make such a big difference. So I'm really, I'm really happy about that plate. I think it's a really nice addition. Next up, we've got plates in the form of Venusaurite, Blastosinite, and Gengarite, meaning that we're going to be able to mega evolve these figures. So let's look at them. Then these are the new figures that you can now pull from boosters: Mega Gengar, Mega Venusaur. Uh, Mega Blastoise, Mega uh, EX Gengar, EX Malamar. Oh, so excited about Malamar! Really good ability. Spiritomb, Sableye, Inkay, and Poochyena. Bringing back the new figures of Trevenant, Greninja, Evil Tor, Venusaur, and Blastoise. I need to pull my Blastoise. That Mega Blastoise is amazing. Also, we've got some 10 packs available, um, which you can now purchase and also acquire from monthly rewards. And finally, Ruby Hall is now available with some quite interesting rules, which I'm excited about, like building a deck for that, and that will last three days. So, some Carmelite rewards as well from that. So let's get to it. The, the, the big, big, big part of this is, I think we've got some of the biggest and best figures in a long time that are going to make such a huge difference. I'm so excited about getting potentially. I'm so excited about my pulls. By the way, I'll be doing my pulls in a separate video because I've got so many to do. It's going to be the biggest booster opening I've seen, I think, because it might be in excess of 100 figures. I actually need to get rid of some figures because I've got 84 in my inbox at the moment. So first of all, we have three new sets of boosters that we can buy. We can buy the recommended booster, which is guaranteed to drop a rare EX or UX figure. Now that will cost us the, the general, you know, what it used to be, 200 to quadruple. Single tickets, I've got 76, actually 81 to pull um, in the future video, so I'm excited about that. We have very different figures that drops though, because we have the new figures, Gengar, Venusaur, Blastoise, Mega Forms, Gengar, Malamar, Spirit Tomb, and Sableye, all great figures um, that will, will be in the quadruples. In the special ones, though, we have the addition of uh, the old UX figures as well. So you might get a UX figure, but it might be one of the old ones. And it's based on how OP Venusaur, Blastoise, Gengar, Mega Form are. I'm, I'm tempted not to even go near this one, but it is guaranteed to drop at least one EX UX figure. So that's kind of nice. Next up, we have the exclusive loyalty, which is a new thing to Pokemon Jewel. And this is insane. So you get an exclusive loyalty booster, which is guaranteed to drop an EX UX figure as 50%. So that will give you a 47% chance at getting an EX drop. And it will give you the, the standard 3% at getting a UX figure. So just guaranteed to drop, which is huge, huge. And how do you acquire them? How do you get monthly points? How do you get that monthly booster ticket? Well, you do that by earning loyalty points. And loyalty is earned by how long you've played the game, by how many games you've played, by you know how many times you've you've top rank. Oh no, wait, no, loyalty is actually measured by how much you spend. What? This is a huge, you know, if you're gonna put this as a, a reward, don't put it down as loyalty. Loyalty is not determined by how much somebody spends on a game. Pay to play players that, you know, they work hard to, to earn their money to put into this game. So you can't kind of be angry at them, but loyalty, you gotta be angry at the developers here because this is such a big money grabbing scheme. It's, it, it's, it's bordering on disgusting. What I will say though is as huge a big a difference as is for pay to play figures in, in bridging the gap between them and free to play players, you know, in the what we saw in the 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 awards, Pokemon Awards that I just did, is that free to play players are better than pay to play players. We, even with money spent on it. <laughs> <laughs> 
he's getting angry at pay-to-play players. They don't like pay-to-play players because he got beaten by one. So, you, you know, even though it might bridge a bigger gap between free-to-play, that was Pokemon Awards showed that they need to, some way of catching up because King Mystic is one of the best players and has just earned 4,000 rank. Congrats on that. That just shows he's free to play. You don't need to. In gyms, we have TMMN bossing every gym, most invincible trophies, free to play player. So don't be too disheartened. You can still be amazing at this game if you grind and you know earn the free tickets and stuff. But this is is, is bad, you know. How do we earn it? Rewards are earned by how much you spend. The $8 prize that you can get currently, um, new, the 25 million bonus, you can get really good value for money. Um, and that will earn you 960 points. So you use that as an idea of how much you need to spend. Props to my boy, uh, Pokemon Pogo Instinct 12 on Reddit for posting the exact details on this. The rewards for purchasing top package are an EX cube, rare metal EX, and loyalty booster ticket with 3% UX rate and 47% EX rate. He's determined that if somebody spends $400 a month, 300 quid in UK terms pretty much, you will get five EX cubes, an average of 2.5 EX UX. Is that metal or? Or is that figures? That's no, that's figures. Ten thousand seven hundred eighty material, as well as twenty one ten packs. Twenty one ten packs, guaranteed EX, potential three percent chance of getting a UX figure. He predicts that we'll see a lot more chain levels. Yeah, we're going to see a lot more chain levels. So hopefully not from the bug. Um, other people in the comments, Retro1988 saying only our beloved po po develop po Pokemon Jewel developers could take a point system designed to make sure you don't spend too much and turn it into a point system encouraging you to spend more. The only, this only benefits whales. Anyone merely dabbing in sales gets spit in their face with their loyalty. It's disgusting. Free to play may as well not even try to compete unless they're very lucky. That's by IRHP87. I've got to agree with, with it's a disgusting, dirty ploy of earning money. And it's kind of that, you know, they must have earned so money, it's starting to tail off, and now they're like, oh, we need to get um, um, our money up. Yes, it means that they can invest in the game a lot in the long run, but I'd say it bridges the gap a little bit too much uh, between free-to-play and play-to-play -play players. So not too happy about that. And I, I read this, I uh, fig uh, read uh, the comment on Reddit, after looking at all the figures, and... Oh, to ignoring that, putting it on this side, I am so excited. This is the best banner, and these are the best figures. So let's just have a few minutes talking about these figures and how much they're going to shake up the system. Let's go from rare to EX. You know, Inkai, Puchiena, it's Hunter Tita, Matiena, not really worth talking. Haunter with your, you know, this is going to be difficult to get an evolve with that 20 nightshade. So let's talk about the rare figures. Sableye is such a good rare figure. Hacking Gems ability. This Pokemon can pass through other Pokemon when it makes an MP move. Awesome, a two MP move. It's gonna be able to jump over people. When this Pokemon is on the field, opposing Pokemon deal minus one damage. Whoa, so this is like your Joltic, but like against your opponent. You pull this guy on, and you're all of a sudden getting minus one damage to all your opponents. That means if it comes down to chain levels, you're gonna have such a big advantage. Now, the problem with Joltic I always had is this guy was, it, it wasn't too hard to take out, especially with a gold attack figure. Sableye is vulnerable to gold attacks, but whoa, is he a beast because he doesn't have that white attack. He comes in with Confuse Ray at three star, Will-O-Wisp at one star, Shadow Sneak at 70 being a yellow attack, that's a high 70 attack, high yellow attack, and whoa, I'm really, this guy is going to be fun to use in decks, I think we'll be seeing a lot of him. Next up, Spiritomb, a really confusing Pokemon because it's rare, it's a rare and it has zero MP, meaning you're going to have to pull this onto the field using Pokemon Switch, things like that. When this Pokemon moves on from the field to the field, sorry, when this Pokemon moves from the bench to the field, spin a Pokemon. 
If it spins a white attack, attach a curse marker to it, which means if it dies, it gets excluded from the duel. And your, your Pokemon can pass through this Pokemon when using an MP move, just a little bit of an addition. It's backed up by some fairly decent attacks. Curse at one star. You know, curse markers are horrible if you're playing with them and against them because you could get excluded from the duel. A nice 60 yellow attack and cover on the destiny bond, seeing as if it's knocked out, so is the battle opponent. And a small eight miss. Another great figure and nice unique abilities. Then we come to where it really gets exciting. The new EX figures. Malamar is insane. I'm just checking my mics on. Whew, my mics on. <laughs> you get this part of a recording and you haven't checked it. So, Malamar. Whoa. For effects that move this Pokemon's battle opponent, you decide where it is used, when Pokemon is targeted, and where the targeted Pokemon will be moved to. What? This is insane. So if you don't understand this, Malamar gets attacked by Sceptile. Sceptile hits stealth hit. That means he gets to jump out. No! Nope. Nerfed. Nerfed your that. <laughs> stop. <laughs> He'll stop it in his tracks. You take that stealth hit and you apply that effect to any Pokemon you want on the field. You target your your Pokemon, you can stealth it over somebody and then make an MP move. This this makes Anybody with a bulldoze, you see Rhyperia's, Swampert, these guys who have blue attacks that move Pokemon, Shuttle Flip on your your um, your Mew, all of a sudden can be applied anyway. This is a huge, huge ability, huge ability, rare with two MP. And then he's backed up by a beautiful mass hypnosis at two star. The battle opponent and all Pokemon are the same species as the battle opponent, so I take that to be um, Malamar and Inke, not type, uh, because that's they would otherwise they would probably state it type. And backed up with a psycho cut, basically a Grovile equivalent, getting the ability to spin 120. Whoa, <laughs> whoa! Not vulnerable to Poliwhirl. Vulnerable to confuse rain massively though. So that's what you gotta be going for if you're playing against him. Just an insane ability. Next up we have Gengar. Oh, Gengar with the I was hoping this guy would be strong, and yes, he is. He's like a unique figure that has awesome abilities. This Pokemon can pass through other Pokemon when it MPs move MP moves. If it passes through poison, noxious, or sleeping Pokemon, they faint. In a poison deck, this guy's gonna be insane. Insane. He's gonna be in combination with poison poison deck. You, you poison somebody, you use a cybertone, all of a sudden you pull Gengar up to the plate and then pop over, faint, then he can initiate attack and backed up by powerful moves. Contagious terror. Two star, the battle opponent and the succession of opposing Pokemon adjacent to it gain three weight. That's huge. Plus, you know, all of a sudden maybe we'll see those weight wins come into effect a little bit more as well. Nightshade at 100, backed up with a nice attack that you put some chain levels on and it's, it's in the game with others. Huge, a nice nice dodge and a miss that you can reduce to four. Ha, awesome, and it just gets better. So from that, let's go on to Mega Gengar. This Pokemon can MP move past other Pokemon next to this. This Pokemon can MP move past other Pokemon, so it's your standard ghost type move. Pokemon next to this Pokemon cannot move using the effects of moves, abilities, or energy. So that means it's like your your um, your, your dude that has the trap ability. You can't think of him right now, but you can basically trap Pokemon. So if you you sit on somebody, they can't make a movement forward. That's a really nice ability. Also, your Ghost and Poke Poison type gets ten damage. So you got this guy getting. Uh, what, so 130 on Abysmal Grip, Abysmal, Abyssal Grip? If this Pokemon fades, the Battle Opponent moves to your PC as well, so not only that, is he moves to your PC and all of a sudden you knock two out, so you get more figures on the board, just in case he get, does get knocked out. If uh, you could back this up within Poison decks, you can have him trapping figures, then making a move forward. Huge potential advantage could be gained from that. And toxic, the battle opponent becomes noxious. So you could make them noxious, return to normal form of Gengar, then hop over them and eliminate them. 
not eliminate them from the duel, but take them out and send them to the PC. Whoa, loving that ability. Then I'm gonna get to my final figure. Who do you think I'm gonna go for as my favorite? Mega Blastoise, what? He is insane. We're gonna get to him after Venusaur. So Mega Venusaur, this Pokemon can MP move over poisoned and noxious Pokemon, making him even stronger in a poison deck. Pokemon that this Pokemon move over will gain five weight. Ouch, that's pretty nasty. Your grass and poison Pokemon deal plus 10 damage. So we have Solar Beam coming in at 150 on Venusaur. Whoa. Venom Whip, one Pokemon within two steps becomes noxious. So you can, you know, all of a sudden you can MP move, oh, you can make them noxious and MP move over them. A nice two star. So he's good. You know, we get Meta Venusaur, going into Mega Venusaur with two MP, which is, is you know, that's what, you know, Venusaur needs that speed booster ability to get plus two, plus one MP. Uh, but we, this is one way that you can give him that ability. And then finally we have Mega Blastoise, who I'm so excited for. His turtle missile attack is insane. So this guy deals plus 10 damage for every water type Pokemon on the field. On the field, that means their Pokemon as well. So this means that, you know, in a water deck, he's going to be insane. Like his, his 100 Hydro Pump is going to be massive. It's going to be a killer. And nobody will match it. Um, and then you have your Pokemon water type deal 20 damage, so it's plus 20 anyway, and I imagine plus 10 because he's a water type Pokemon, he's on the field. So that's 130 Hydro Pump from the offset. If nobody else has any water Pokemon, you don't. You need like one more, one more water Pokemon to help him beat anybody. Then we have this awesome attack um, of Turtle Missile. It's a blue attack, so it's pretty much guaranteed to hit unless somebody hits a blue attack. Observe. Spin for one of your opponent's Pokemon on the field. If they spin a white attack, they are knocked out. Nice. And that's a spin for one of your opponents on the field, so it's kind of like a tactical Draco Meteor type of attack. And if this Pokemon has evolved, the effect repeats for each time this Pokemon has evolved. So, Gyarados. Gyarados has evolved from Magikarp, so if you spin, and I imagine if it hits purple, you can spin again and try and hit that white attack. So a really, really powerful, powerful attack. And the fact that it just can attack anybody anybody on the field as well makes it a really, really good move. And you're not gonna wanna attack this guy just in case. Actually, you're not gonna wanna attack this like completely because he's insane. You know, pull the, pull the, um, pull the, that new speed attack, the, uh, sorry, the gold attack that turns white to gold discs. Boom, all of a sudden it's got a huge, huge yellow disc. Same for Venusaur, Mega Venusaur, actually you could pull that off, and Gengar. So, and anybody with a huge white disc. <laughs> so that's everything, that's all the figures. As for now, you know, I'm gonna do a mass booster opening. I am gonna probably be buying the quads, not the 10 with the guaranteed EX UX figure, because I want some of the new UX figures because I think I think they're way more OP than the last ones. I'm gonna be opening my 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 rainbow booster, you know, my guaranteed rare. I'm never gonna get an EX. I haven't had an EX for a while now. I had that flurry of three in like four days and then since then nothing. And that's everything, yeah. Figures, bugs, loyalty bonus, new ranking rewards. There was a lot to talk about today. Um, so let me know what you guys are thinking as well. What do you think about this monthly loyalty rewards? I mean, it's not going to be positive, is it? Does anybody think it's a positive thing? Uh, I don't know. Nope. So that's all for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you have, you hit the like button and hit subscribe if you want to keep up to date with future information. That's all for me. See you soon.